Yeah, yeah, yeah. We get lit, we get fly, we get drunk, we get high. But to the masses, we have a podcast called Verified. I'm your host. I am Joe Paul. Uh, we are brought to you by Radio Pushes and Results in No Hype. And we have a very, very special guest. So make sure you check us out on the verifiedpodcast.com. This is Miss Bianca Jade. She is probably one of the first fitness fashion gurus on the market. She is a pioneer, an international influencer extraordinaire, not to mention she is absolutely beautiful. Someone that I've been stalking, I mean, admiring for uh, for quite some time. <laughs> you know, without further ado, Miss Bianca Jade. And you know what? I think the best way that, that we could bring you in is, let me see. I think I can, I think I can do it. Happy birthday. Day to oh you. My God, I love it. Thank Happy you. Day to you. Happy birthday, Bianca Jade. Happy birthday <laughs> to you. Blow out your candle. <sighs> Holy shit, it worked. <laughs> Bianca Jade, thank you so much. Welcome to the Verify Podcast. How are you doing? This Cheers. Evening? Cheers. Cheers. I, I had it in tinfoil to keep it cold. <laughs> I've, I've become an innovator during the pandemic. You know, how to keep my drinks colder throughout the night. Because <laughs> when you live by yourself, you have to think about the most ingenious things to just entertain yourself. So cheers and happy cheers. birthday. To you. Cheers. <laughs> so being that we are in a pandemic, you know, let me first ask you, how are you doing? Like mentally, how are you holding up? How's your family doing? You know, I feel like it's... um. It's our job as like influencers to kind of check on one another only because, you know, we're moving yeah. around, mo moving and shaking, trying to make some things happen. So now that we have a chance to just, how you doing? Thank you for asking. Um, I, listen, I lost a few relatives uh, throughout the early on, actually, in the pandemic, um, lost my grandma. Thank you. Um, and I think that was like, that all came as a shock, you know, and I was one of those people, I hate to say it, that was like when it was first, when, when COVID or coronavirus, as we were first calling it was happening, I was like, oh, this will be done in three months. Like, like I literally was convinced that it would be done in just a few months and that, you know, and, and I was one of those people that I was like, the mask thing, like I'm not a Trumper at all, like at all, but, like, but I thought the mask thing was like, was a, was extra. And, and I think that, you know, I say this out loud, like uh, embarrassed because I know a lot of people were feeling this way too. And then like, it took me even just like months that mask, like I was angry. Like I felt so like oppressed, but I wore it and now it's funny because you asked me how I am. And now like, I'm the girl that like, I'm like scared to take the mask off. Like I'm scared to be like too close to people. Like I turn, I went from the person that was like, I can't do this. I can't breathe to being the person that's like, I little literally like hyperventilate in situations that, you know, that feel too close for comfort. And so I know a lot of people are, are feeling the same way because like I was out with my, my agent for lunch the other day and we had uh, a reservation for lunch um, at just like some, like just some outdoor slash indoor place here in the city. Mm -hmm. And we got there and he was like, I can't eat here. And I was like, I, I was like, why? And he's like, the tables are too close to everybody. And here I thought I was like super paranoid and I see someone else who's like the guy that like I used to like go party with at the strip clubs like, you know, back when days were normal, like this guy, like the biggest part here, you know, I know like he can't he's scared to be too close to people. I can relate. I can totally relate. I mean, it's um, it's a situation that unfortunately um, the media played a very, very big role in. And only certain stations, to tell you the truth, you know, uh, kind of, you know, kind of helped. Um, what's the word? Um, I guess propagate the the lies and misinformation that were kind of, you know, put on the American people when it was it was not right. Like there was there was there should have been a direct line and clear, decisive information that was given out by 
all parties instead of allowing like conspiracy theories to take place like oh like if you're breathing in the mask you're breathing in carbon dioxide so you're actually doing damage to yourself meanwhile every single one of those you know uh, conspiracy theories have been disproven and only if you have extreme like an extreme like lung disorder can that actually play a role to it but in reality i wear a mask you wear a mask that's the only way to keep it safer. Right. It's, not, it's not safe. It's safer. You know, and I'll even tell you a situation I got into this morning. I went to the store to get uh, a couple of supplies. <laughs> and, um, actually, I love I, it. Thank you so much, by the way. That's the sweetest thing ever. Really. Thank you. I, no <laughs> I wish I could eat it. Like, I wish you could just like. Uh, <laughs> I, will, I will eat it for you. And I will text you later and I will tell you how delicious it tasted because I'm going to be high as shit. So when I have the munchies, oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, yeah, I'm going to devour it, you know, but this morning, <laughs> uh, this morning I went into the store. Now, um, I don't know if you've like ever followed like my stories on Instagram, but I am a fucking nutcase when it comes to wearing the mask and being safe only because my father just had a triple bypass open heart surgery. So his immune system is compromised and I'm his caretaker like three or four days a week. So in nursing him back to health, he couldn't even get like a common cold, so let alone coronavirus. Right. So, and we're in New York. So it was like the most devastating, you know, hit places, you know. So I've been on lockdown since the end of February, taking it so serious. It's crazy. I've literally lost my mind, but I've developed an amazing platform, you know, with this. So at least I could have like my virtual date. I mean, uh, interview with, uh, <laughs> with you. Um, and so this morning when I went into the store, it was a kid I saw that was running, like coming behind me and he wasn't wearing a mask. And I literally turned to him. I was like, I was like, you going in? He's like, he's like, yeah, I was like without a mask. And he's like this. He's like, oh, I forgot. I was like, I was like, you're going to wait outside until I get out. And then um, and I saw that he walked in after me, like after I closed the door on him, he walked in, put his shirt over his face. And I literally grabbed a mask from the counter, threw it at him. I said, put this mask on right now or we're going to have a problem. And he did. And I, you. Uh, I can't. I I need to get back to normal. I need to get back to work. I need to go in the clubs where I can get my walk-in fee, my appearance fee, my performance fee. I need to be able to introduce people and move and shake and make a couple hundred dollars here, a couple hundred dollars there. For artists, you know, like that's that's a big part of the game. So I haven't been able to work like that yeah. in oh, ages. And, and that's why I think, you know, like I'm so, I feel so lucky today that like, today of all days is my birthday and to like have this new, you know, president, um, you know, in office, a new oh, administration. Isn't it like I, isn't it I, feel, I feel so blessed. I mean, listen, like he's not like, he's not like, you know, he wasn't, you know, my pick pick, my, my ultra, you know, pick for president, but like, it doesn't matter. Sorry. I keep having emails going off on my computer, but it doesn't, it doesn't matter for me. Like all that matters is that like, this is someone who believes in like fixing this and getting us, you know, back to normal. I mean, I, I can't, I I've been in like a state of, you know, getting back to you asked me like how, how I am. Like I've been in a state of shock, like even just the day of the like Capitol riots. Like I was just like, is this like, really happening like like i i w what country do we live in it's like, where and are we like what like where like I, it's crazy that so that mm -hmm. so many people and I, and <clears throat> i don't so much blame the people because they're only believing what they've been told and kind of brainwashed and kind of embedded into their brain when you watch <laughs> certain stations that are repeating that rhetoric it's very dangerous it's very cult-like and it's like the more times you tell a lie the more it becomes truth to the person that's believing it so yeah, but it's also like it it's not just um people being lied to and told things like this is like a chosen path that a lot of people in certain states and you know regions around our country choose, choose to be on it's a path you know i'm originally from um, St. Louis, Missouri. And I mean, I spent a lot amount of time at home during this whole pandemic, you know, with my family show and me. we went to the country. Show me. Show, yeah, is, yeah. Me state? Now, is, it, is it Missouri the show me state? Yeah. Yeah. I remember doing, yeah. doing a report. You don't, don't want to see what they got to show. You don't want to see I, it. I don't, I don't. I don't. <laughs> but we went out to the country and it was like, 
scary. I mean, the don't get me wrong. Like Missouri people out in the country are so nice, but then the minute like you really hear, you know, their beliefs and what they think about, like, you know, people of color or what they think about like liberal ideas or any of that, it's just like, kind of like insane. I, and it's I'm very, it's, it's very Confederate and Confederate esque. It's like some of these people. Um, now, I, I mean, being in the music industry, I have friends all over the country, you yeah. know, and and seeing the type of blatant racism that I've seen is astonishing. How people can literally walk with with tiki torches, you know, like spitting out, you know, KKK shit. How people can storm the Capitol with a thing with a shirt that says Camp Auschwitz and hear them say six million was not enough. It's like, are you? I, are, are you, I mean, you, you are both Jewish. Like you're Jewish, right? Yeah. Yep. So um, when I saw that, because I was um, like, before I go to bed at night, you know, I kind of like read like a, either like CNN app or like something. And I saw it and they hadn't like called it out yet, but I like see the guy with the sweatshirt and I immediately took a picture and posted it to my Insta and I circled the sweatshirt and I was like, how was anybody not talking about this? And then two days later, people were talking about it. But I was like, what the hell is that sweatshirt? That's like, like these are, I'm just going to say it. These are the deplorables. Like, and I even put that on my Insta. I was like, can we now call them deplorables? Because I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't. I mean, they're, I mean, they're insurrectionists, you know, I mean, they're people that literally have a deep, a deep seated belief of hatred rather than unity. How people in today's day and age still have the nerve to actually hate another human being when there's so much, we see so much hate all around the world. It's like, you know, literally divided we stand. Yeah, I mean, I mean, divided we fall, united we stand. It's like, I can't, I can't stand how humanity hasn't gotten a grip on this, you know, after all the injustice that we've seen, you know, with George Floyd, Breonna Taylor. I mean, I'm from Staten Island. So Eric Gardner, it's, it's, it's crazy that we're still dealing with this, but hopefully, like you said, with this new administration, we have a sense of empathy now in the country. We have a sense of class and dignity and somebody would experience, you know, I taught, I spoke about this um, on one of my earlier, um, stories on Instagram <clears throat> referring to what's called barriers of entry in the business world. So mm-hmm. it's like in order, so I worked for a bank mm-hmm. in order to determine whether a business was credible for a loan. I'd have to assess what kind of business they are. Mm-hmm. Once I'd have to determine what was the barriers of entry to get into this field. Can anyone just get into this field? Okay, so doctors and lawyers, you know, we look at them a little bit more favorable because the barriers of entry are 12 years of school, countless tests, Hippocratic oath, like like some real shit. So we value their business a little bit more than, say, a deli and someone could just walk into and say, oh, this is a nice deli called the United States of America. I think I could buy it. And that's exactly what happened. So I feel like there, there should be more barriers of entry into that position of becoming a president. So like Joe Biden has 30 years experience in politics, has eight years in the White House as actual tangible experience. So I feel like we can't let another billionaire just buy the election anymore. No, but you know, like I, it's about the people too. And I think um, unfortunately the people spoke with Donald Trump and a lot of like, you don't even know. Like, I I mean, I have so many friends that voted for him that are educated, like went to the like best schools in the country that, you know, are successful, that have like very professional, you know, top paying jobs here in New York City. And I just like, it was like, whoosh. and even to like, I'm not, I'm not sure if up until the Capitol riots, but like, even to like the election fraud ordeal, they were like still supporting him and stay and still saying, Oh, let's see, like, you know, it was the election was unfair and all this stuff. And I'm like, where's your brain? (laughs) But I think you have to let the people speak. And I think what happened with this is like people made a mistake and a lot of those people flip flopped, you know, back to like, you know, voting for, you know, a Democrat. I really, I don't, I mean, I, I at least like want to believe that's what happened. And Hey, you know, change I, when, when Trump was voted in, I remember being like, I was crying that night and I was like, 
only four years. I only have to deal with this for four years. And that's exactly what happened. And so I'm just so happy that like, listen, we could, it could have been eight. It could have been eight. So Please, don't even speak that into the fucking universe. <laughs> like I've never been so, I've never been so happy to see a plane take off. And I, I, I've never actually like, you ever see, um, uh, oh fuck. What the hell is the name of that movie? Final destination. You know, uh, I almost like, I wanted a final destination kind of incident to happen. I've never wished that on anybody, but I wouldn't have minded if something happened. But anyway, so oh, I, I I was always like concocting like plots for his death. Like not that I was plotting it, but like I was like, oh, but what if like there was like a guy like a shooter, and then he just like just like he just happened to get him, you know? Right, just happened to be like right there within like a hundred yards, you know? Like, but anyways, so Bianca Jane, so talk to me about who you oh, are. At, at, Hold on one second. Who's bothering us there in my podcast? Me. All right. Let me just hang it up. Okay. Um, I'm really not that popular. It's funny. Like I'm getting emails and phone calls like during your podcast. So it's like, I think. Because they knew you're going to be on here. So everyone's trying to jump on the bandwagon now. See? See, I'm a trendsetter. But I want to talk about like, like who you are. Like, how'd you grow up? You know, um, talk to me about the young Bianca Jade. Like, what, what did your parents do? Uh, okay. Um, this might be boring. <laughs> um, my, my dad actually was, uh, an entrepreneur when he was younger and he had clothing stores, like women's clothing stores. And he sold dresses and outfits that like probably would be in style now, you know, um, because you know how all that stuff comes full circle and denim and yeah, he was like, he owned shops and, um, my mom worked in the shops, um, but she was also an entrepreneur and had her own businesses. Um, then one day, um, my dad had to close all the stores and we like, we, we were getting by, you know, like we weren't ever wealthy or anything like that, but, uh, then he had to close all the stores and, you know, times were really, really tough. So when I look back and I think about you know, my life, it sort of starts there because I remember there was a store and I'm probably totally aging myself, but there was a store called County Seat at the mall. And I wanted these $40 pair of like booty cut off, like Daisy Duke shorts. And my, it was at the mall that my dad had one of his stores. And I mm -hmm asked my dad, I'm like, can I have these shorts? And my dad was like, we can't afford those. And that like was when my life started in a way, like in terms of my memories, because I remember being like, no one's ever going to tell me that I can't have the Daisy Duke shorts. <laughs> I want those Daisy Duke shorts. And next time when this happens, I'm going to be able to buy them myself. And that is really like me in development. It was me about me, like, wanting to become something. So if there was something that I wanted, I could afford it. And listen, like it was so much deeper than that. Like, of course, like why does like a 12 year old girl, you know, or however old I was like need a $40 pair of like booty shorts, especially like so long ago, that was, that was expensive. But I think it really like shaped me to, to feel like I don't ever want to have to rely on my parents or a man or whether it's my husband or a boyfriend or whatever to take care of me. I want to take care of myself. And, uh, and that, that was, see, you see, that's, that's not a boring part of the story at all. I feel like that's actually very pivotal because I feel like started with Daisy Dukes. <laughs> like, yeah, well, I mean, I, I was talking about more about the entrepreneurial, you know, um, you know, spirit in you, you know, from your parents, you know, being entrepreneurs right. and now you're an entrepreneur. So maybe that 40, that $40, you know, pair of Daisy Dukes, you know, serves as a symbol to the start of your entrepreneurialism. I think entrepreneurialism. Yeah. That works. You know, and, and, uh, and I'm glad that, you know, he didn't buy them for me, whether or not we could afford them or not. Cause who knows the real story? Like, you know, my parent, my dad might've been just been like, she's not wearing those. Yeah, not her right. She's not going in those. Are you fucking kidding me? I'll beat her all over the place. <laughs> yeah. So, okay. uh, but yeah, that was kind of the start of it. And, uh, and really like, you know, I, as I got older, I tried so many, you know, I got, I graduated from college and whatever, like I, I, Went back to school again after college for what? Co what college did you go to? I went to Cornell University. 
Okay. And what were you, what were your majors? What did you, uh, what you study? Psychology. And I was like, literally always in, like a nerd. I was a cool nerd. Like I was a nerd that like was still like, I went to college, you know, I partied. You're, you're, pretty, you're a pretty hot <laughs> nerd. I mean, I mean girl, women as hot as you are not supposed to be nerds. So I respect. But I was an undercover nerd. Like I studied hard. And, and, and you're Jewish. I'm, I, I mean, we're getting married. That's it. Yep. Yeah. That's it. Whole, whole package. That's it. Whole package. And after COVID, I got to introduce you to the folks. That's it. After we all get vaccinated. No. I'm ready to step on the glass right now. <laughs> um, so yeah, like I graduated from college. I tried out a couple of things. Um, I worked the reason I think that my career as an influencer and marketing and media person really, really worked out was because I had a career in advertising. I used to write commercials for, for about eight or nine years. And I was always behind the scenes, like not in front of the camera, not doing the Instagram thing, not showing my face. I was literally always corporate. behind the scenes. Yeah, you were, you were completely corporate. And I remember we were, we were uh, once I kind of like rose through the ranks of that advertising job, um, I started doing the, the casting for my commercials. And these like really cute girls would come in and they would like, you know, they would do their audition. And I would tell them what I needed them to do. And a lot of them didn't get it. And so I would get in front of the camera and I would be like, this is what I need you to do. And I would kind of like, you know, do it myself. If you want something done, you got to do it your damn self. Yeah. And then someone was like, Bianca, like you should, you should act. And I was like, no, 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 I don't act. Um, but I did end up going to improv school. I went to the UCB program. You, you, I mean, you're funny. You know that shit, right? UCB. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm a little funny. I, I try to be, you know. I mean, as the alcohol, you know, sets in, I get a lot funnier. Only because I, I I'm yeah, I don't, stuff. yeah, I, I don't, I don't, I don't. Sometimes I don't realize what I'm talking about, and then all of a sudden, like people be like, "Oh, that was so fucking funny." Then I'll watch it back and be like, "That was pretty funny." Yeah, <laughs> no, you literally have a, a guy that wears a banana thong following you, and that's <laughs> following you around like that's he's like part of your entourage i mean that's like funny that's hilarious <laughs> yeah, okay. big, big shout out to charlie he's a uh, he's uh out, out in florida right now i haven't seen him since since <laughs> so the funny. pandemic started but uh but yeah we did we did a video in times square my friend you know was wearing like a banana hammock i had a couple of gangsters in there it, it was it was crazy when when going outside was like safe like right. i i think i i think about it now and it's like i can't believe how close we were next to each other it's like this is insane. None of us wear masks. It's like, but you yeah, know, these, you have to like put hand sanitizer all over your friends, all over his body, like because yeah. he's definitely yeah. exposed in that banana am. Oh yeah, absolutely. I actually shun the people that are doing music videos right now because it's like I see all you guys standing next to each other and you're not wearing masks. It's like I understand you need to get your product out there, but it's like. Can't you come up with a more creative sort of video where you don't need 10 people in there, like huddled up next to each other? It's like at times, like, uh, I mean, even influencers are, you know, like whether, whether it's like a fashion influencer or whatever, like they're all doing different things to kind of like respect basically like our limitations. For example, this photographer that I work with, she um, has this like lingerie lingerie model client and they were going to do a photo shoot over zoom and a video over zoom and i was like how do you do that that sounds so awesome and i and and my friend ala the photographer was like well you know she, she was like bianca like she she's in quarantine we're just going to do the best and we're going to expect people to understand that crazy times call for like crazy you know crazy, crazy measures no i i, I get it and and i think that's so cool like it's awesome to see like how people are going to like respect, you know, um, you know, respect what these, these laws that we've created for ourselves, you know, because I mean, I think, I mean, and I think it, I know it's not, if is it a law, like, but it should be a law that like, if you well, in, well, in, in New York, it's, there is a mask mandate. The, you can't push, you can't place a federal mandate on wearing masks, but it is a medical suggestion by medical professionals that have uh, like arrest you right if you're not can they arrest you if you're not arre arrest you 
I, I, I'm not sure of what the actual legalities are. I know that there's a fine that like if you try to like, you know, go into some place. I mean, for the most part now, pe people get it. You know, when you go into like little bodega stores like in New York, I don't know how people act, but it really is. It, it was a politically driven you know, insanity thing when these are medical professionals that like, there's a reason why I'm not a doctor. There's a reason why you're not a doctor. It's like, why are you telling me? Uh, why are you not wearing a mask when a medical professional is saying wear a mask? I, 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 <clears throat> I don't get it. I don't get it. It's fucking crazy. So, so I have a, um, my girlfriends and I are going to this house in the Poconos for my, my birthday. And, um, and I think oh, the we, we will be doing a video call with, uh, with you and your girlfriends. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. We're literally, we'll be like, you know, in her underwear, having pillow fights. Stay you know I think we do. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm it's actually not I'm, like that far from the truth, except we're usually wearing sweatpants, not like underwear, but you know, but because, but because it's you, it's probably like, there's like some like cute, like tight, like legging sweatpants yeah. that like accentuate your curves so exactly. hold on let, let me just imagine it real fast <laughs> <sighs> delicious i'm sorry uh so 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 back to you anyway <laughs> so, um i yeah so okay one of my friends has been in quarantine she got covid no um no symptoms whatsoever she happened to get the test because she has to do it for work or something and she found that she had COVID and she's supposed to come. She's been in quarantine for two and a half weeks. Okay. Yeah. So um, I think that's the person who's been like calling me when we, we heard the phone ringing before. And I'm like, kind of curious, like what she's going to say. Cause she was supposed to get her test results today to find out if the COVID left her system. Okay. Um, but that's like how, like, you know, I think, and a part of me, like, I, I really want all my girls there this weekend. You know, I really do. But at the same time, like, like, I get it. Like, we live in a new world. And if someone gets COVID, like, no one else wants to be around them. Like, you know, you just got to be, we have to, we have to bend and like, be forgiving and accepting and, you know, um, and let go of like, all these things that, you know, Back in the day, like if someone had canceled on me, I would have been like that bitch. But now, but now it's like, you know, it's. Like, you kind of have to be, I mean, based on what we just dealt with, with the last four years, I think that uh, along with like accountability this year, I feel like all of us need to be a little bit more compromising to uh, other people's needs. Right. We, we've, all, we've, all, we've, all, we've all been through the ringer, you know, for the past, like, you know, eight, nine, for the past year, practically, like we've all been dealing with this so we need to kind of we need to have a, a little bit more understanding you know uh, a little we need to be a little bit more empathetic to other people's needs and what people are going through you know? 100 percent. and i think that has like that has been a a big part of like my of my therapy throughout this year is just to be like understanding and get what people are going through mm -hmm. um you know even like the other day like i don't know um my friend was like, kind of like being like really weird on text message. And I was like, Hey, are you mad at me? What the hell's going on? And she's like, no, she's like, I have this big drama happening. She's like, please don't think I'm mad at you. And I'm like, you know, I have to realize like, and there's like so much drama in the world period that like everybody is on like high stress or like everybody is like affected. So I think we all like this whole country like just needs therapy. <laughs> either, either, either therapy or, or everyone needs to just smoke a nice big joint and just sit back and be like, okay. I did, that, I did do that on New Year's. I like I I smoked a little bit on New Year's and it felt like really, really good. I woke up with the worst hangover, but I felt so good. From weed or from drinking? From weed. I get hangovers. That's why that's why I don't smoke. I get a hangover the next day. That is very weird. Oh my goodness. Like, oh, it's like the type of weed you smoke. And like, I don't listen. I don't know. But like, like I will get a headache. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I mean, 
technically, you know, you're taking in smoke, you know, into your into your lungs and you're replacing the oxygen in your brain. So you're depleting your brain a tiny bit of oxygen. So that could cause a little bit of a headache. I, I know I sound like a like a medical nerd right now, but <laughs> so uh, maybe just weed's just not for you, you know, so or, or have some Tylenol handy when, you know, when, when you do smoke. So. <laughs> So, so you're going away uh, to the Poconos, so, uh, and you, you're waiting to find out if your friend is yeah, clear I, of COVID. After I get off with you, I'm going to call her, and I'm going to find out if she passed her test. Well, I hope, I hope she does, so you can enjoy a nice weekend. It's another you know, girl to be in the video with underwear when you call me <laughs> from the Poconos. We got to get to those pillow bites. <laughs> Absolutely. So, um, so when did you realize that kind of you had an act for being in front of the camera? Um, well, yeah, it was when I was telling, when I worked in advertising and I was telling those, you know, actresses to give me a certain kind of delivery and I was doing it myself. I was like, do this. And then I realized I could maybe do this. So, um, so yeah, I started taking, you know, comedy classes and I started, um, a blog and then it, everything just kind of grew from there. And eventually I quit my job in advertising and, I started my business and listen, it did not happen overnight. Like a lot of people like think that I've only been doing this for a couple of years or that I just got lucky or that my family has money or something like I've heard it all. And I have been doing this for like now 14 years running my business. Insane. Congratulations. Thank you. And for the first three years, there was no money. And people told me you need to stop because if you're not making money after three years, it means like, it's it a hobby. Money. Yeah. And well, I was well, like, well, te well, technically, you know, in the business world, you know, uh, for anyone that's listening, you know, um, artists included, because this is very important. <clears throat> when you decide to incorporate and, and own a business, um, you're, you're incurring costs, you know, that you use to deduct. And technically, you if you're not making money after three years, then it's not a business anymore. Then it's considered a hobby and you can no longer take those deductions. You know, the reason why you take those deductions in the first three years is because hopefully you start making money in that fourth year where you can kind of recoup, you know, or you can kind of offset those losses with whatever gain you actually made in that fourth year. So just want everyone to get, continue. Sorry. You know, like, you know your shit. You do. Oh, I, I'm, I'm a smart cook. Listen, I am marriage material. I, I, I keep, I keep telling you. Like, I mean, I mean, I'm not as handsome as I used to be, you know, but uh, I know you have a lot of skincare, you know, regimen. So all you have to do is put me onto them and I'll be, you know, I'll be a, a nice shining star for you. It looks nice. Looks really it, good. It's just the lighting. And, and, I, and I had a fr and I did a fresh shave before the podcast. Oh, no. so. It's working. It's working. So it's, so it's good. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, wait, what were you talking about? <laughs> uh, we, we were talking about, um, uh, Basically, uh, um, when you decided to leave your job and start your career, and I want to, and I want to actually uh, go a little deeper. Okay. I want to talk about your. How was your mental stress during that time of leaving a paid job with benefits and money, and now you're starting your own business? So, talk to me about how how, how you did it mentally, so that all our other entrepreneurs that are thinking, you know, oh, how am I going to leave my job and start this business? It's not for everybody. Business is not for everybody. So I, talk to them. I had nothing to lose because I didn't really have like, I didn't really, I, I didn't really have anything that came from my advertising career. I mean, I had loads of experience of like working at top advertising agencies with like super skilled people, but like with like tangibly, what did I have from it? Did I have a huge savings? No, because they never really paid me that well to begin. I mean, I had a great job, but like I wasn't making that much money and living in New York city, all my money went to rent and the expense of living. Yeah. yeah, yeah you get a shoe box for $7,200 a month. It's fucking great. I know. And just food and like every, like just cost of living was like, it just ate up everything that I earned. So I say I had nothing to lose and, and I, and I didn't. And so I just decided that I wanted to focus on happiness and, figuring out if there was like this one thing that I could try and do. And it was, the idea was to make a brand out of myself essentially. And I, I was this person that like loved fitness and health. And, um, and I love the idea of like being like this, like fashion New York city girl that wasn't scared of like, you know, breaking a sweat and like getting down with the guys and like 
you know, running or playing sports or whatever. And that really, that really was me. Um, and I wanted to encourage other women to, to do the same because there are all these like girls that like come to New York and they wear lots of makeup and they do their hair. And then like five years later, they wonder why they've gained all this weight because they weren't investing any time in like going to the gym or whatever. So, um, so yeah, I built a, I built a brand out of that and it is still kicking. And, um, you know, I, I, I consider myself to be, you know, very successful. Um, not just oh, in- you are. I mean, I was reading your um, your EPK is outstanding. You know, it's uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. When I was looking through it, I was like, I was like, God damn! I was like, she has done a lot, and she and and I love that you have like your stats there, and the the, the coolest fucking thing, which actually is literally you to a fucking T. You know, mm-hmm. was and, and it, it just shows like you know you have um you're very business oriented and you have a, a little pizzazz about you. Uh, the line that says, just, <laughs> says, just ask my followers. I got a couple hundred thousand. Of them. Yeah. yeah. I was like, brilliant, fucking brilliant. I, I loved it. Yeah, I, loved and that's, it. I mean, and it took, it took a, a really long time to, to build that, you know? And like, I mean, it, this is not to say like, and, and I say this in case people are listening that are like, oh, you know, like once you build a following up into a certain amount, like it keeps growing and growing. It doesn't like, I, I saw my numbers dropped by a thousand this past week. And I'm like, Hmm, I wonder if it's because I was talking about how excited I was for the inauguration. And I probably lost a lot of like, you know, Trumpers or Republicans and like things like that happen. Like I, if you. Absolutely. I, I, w- I want you to speak on it. I, I used to now. Um, and I'm going to let you get back to it. Uh, I'm a prime, I'm a prime example of that because I was never into weighing heavily on politics because I never wanted to alienate a portion of my fan base that might be on the opposition. But <clears throat> but this time around, it was a whole bunch different. It was like I needed to stand on principle and it's like delete me. I don't fucking care. It's like I don't I don't need I don't even want you to purchase my material or anything like that. You can watch from afar, but I don't need you and I don't want you. So um so I always steered away from doing the political stuff until I realized that this was this was dangerous to society and people aren't getting informed the right way. So I had to take a stand. I was part of a whole voting movement called hashtag I am the vote with a couple of, uh, you know, hip hop, you know, legends. And and we, we, yeah. and, we did, and we did a lot. We did a lot. And, it was good. And I think it's you if you're going to be pu- like a, um, a public figure, um, you you have two choices. You can hold on. I think we froze. Hold on to. I see you. Can you hear me? What? Yeah, one second. Let's see. Um, am I moving right now? Uh, Let I me see. It's all right. I could edit this part. Okay. I think we're back to normal. Let me see. Let me try to pause it and then unpause okay. it. And we are back. I think we are back. And hopefully not. Uh, I think you are frozen, though. Let's uh, see. Hold on, hold on. Okay. I should be good. Internet I... technology, don't you love it? Are we good? No, I'm not frozen. I was only kidding. I was only kidding. Okay. So. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I yeah, think. Not, not, yeah. yeah. Now that now that we're back, I was like, let me just let me just freeze in place, like. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I mean, I got to spice it up for your birthday. And plus, you know, this is plus this is like this is like the first date that I've been on in like, you know, uh, even though it's an interview in like, you know, in over a year. So it's like I'm trying to I'm trying to wow you with my personality right now. I like it. Well, cheers to that. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> OK, so so you start you started this business and it was pretty scary to, you know, to even though you had nothing to lose, you know, you it was still kind of nerve wracking because you weren't really making money within the first couple of years. So, so talk to me about what happened when you first started to make money. Um, it was super exciting when I first started making money. And I remember like, I got, I think I remember my first paid job. It was like my, my manager at the time was working with this crazy girl. Um, but she got me like this $500, appearance fee where I was working with like some athleisure brand and I had to like go to like this, like, um, um, 
kind of like an expo type thing, but it was, it was like a private expo for like rich people. Like, I don't know, it was very weird. And I'd go and represent the brand and talk to people. And I remember I was like so excited and nervous and, um, And here's the thing, and this happens to a lot of people, is that I was like, I don't deserve to be here because it was my first thing. And I just like didn't know how to be. I didn't know how to act. And uh, and I remember I don't think it like it didn't go bad, but it didn't go great. And I always think back to that time, because like whenever I do something that makes me nervous, like I tell myself, like, you deserve this. You worked for this. Like you're going to own it. Even if you have no idea what you're fucking doing, you're going to show up and you're going to pretend like you know what you're doing and you're going to own it. And you're going to hundred percent be exactly what you, you know, what, what you think you should be. And, uh, I lo- love it. You gotta, sometimes, sometimes you got to fake it till you make it. I mean, listen, I've got to get a paycheck. Someone's got to, someone got to pay these bills. Right. But we, sometimes we just think we don't like deserve something because like, it's just, it's so nerve wracking that we start like self doubting ourselves. And, uh, I, I had a similar experience like to that, like not even too long ago. Like, so, uh, so now, um, for some reason I've, I've ended up, you know, being befriended by like some of like the legends of like the hip hop world from like the, like yesteryear, like the executives and stuff. And it's like, so, um, I'm. I'm humbled when I'm on like these private calls. Like we, we do like a fight night. We do a zoom fight night uh, every weekend. And um, I can't wait for this weekend for the Conor McGregor fight, by the way. Um, And it's like, and I see the people that are on, you know, the zoom and I'm like, I'm like, how am I here? I'm like, I'm just, you know, I'm yeah. I've been in the industry, you know, for, you know, over 20 years, I've never really like made a, a gigantic impact. I have impacted a bunch of people, but on the grand scheme of things, it's like, I always feel like, like, how am I even here right now? I don't deserve to be here, but then I'm like, well, maybe I do. Do And that's, and everybody feels that way at some point when just something starts going right. And you're just like, wait, this is weird. Like, I don't know if this is okay. Like, and I've, I mean, I still have moments um, of that. And I think, I think it's good to feel that way because that means you're human and you're humble and you're a good person. Um, But at the same time, you need to check yourself and like, and remind yourself, like, I worked for this. I know how to do it. I can handle it. And, uh, and you just, and, and go with it, you know, Um, sometimes, I mean, uh, sometimes you just got to kick yourself in the ass and, and and take a shot because you miss a hundred percent of the shots that you never take. Right. And all those people that like we so admire, like, you know, our role models and everything, like half the time, I don't think they know what they're doing either. So, you know, they're all they're all on drugs. (laughs) Yeah, most of them anyway. I mean, I mean, we we weigh opinions so highly on celebrities where, where I think that it's it's kind of an alternate universe. You know, it's like. Why are you going to listen to them just because they were in like a blockbuster movie? Like they're no, they're, they're a human being. Like, you know, I'd rather listen to you that has, you know, a psychology degree. Well, I mean, you're much, much more appealing to look at than a lot of them anyway. So I'd rather listen to you. Celebrities, like they're not like necessarily, you know, listen, I think a lot of celebrities are special, but like we're kind of discovering because of this whole, you know, people being outed left and right that, that a lot of the people that we thought were so amazing are just like, just as human and just as fucked up as like the next guy. Um, One example, Army Hammer. Like, I don't know if you've been following all that stuff, but Army Hammer, like the actor from the social network, like literally, wow, that guy is like crazy. And and he got outed like big time over the past um, two weeks and, and he's an actor that I totally like loved, like love, love, love. And now I'm now I'm like, why do I even pe- put people on pedestals? Because just because you're famous does not mean that you're this extra special person. That's like a God. You really aren't, you know, very, very true. Very true. I mean, that's I mean, they're acting, you know, uh, and so it's like you don't really know who the real person, you know, actually is unless you're a psychologist, you know, or have a psycho- psychiatry degree. And you could actually read people like that. So I wonder if you're like psychoanalyzing me this whole time right now. No, well, I'm not. No, Hold I'm on. Not. I got to put, I got to put on I a, do a want to psychoanalyze Army Hammer because that guy is like, 
<laughs> Are you freezing yourself again? <laughs> no, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Now. <laughs> I, I was I was switching my demeanor so this way you know it would interrupt your like psychiatry sensor oh, so, you, yeah. no. so you can't read me just yet. I don't, I don't want to let you fully in. I got to leave you something for the imagination. You know, for, for, for date two for the weekend when you're in the Poconos. <laughs> so uh, so where do you see you know your brand? or at least your influencership, you know, going, you know, in the next, you know, couple of years, don't, you know, give us your, you know, five-year cash forecast, you know, but give me like an idea of where you see, you know, things going with your company and your brand. Well, um, I always wanted to write a book and I've been talking about a book for a long time. And that in many, in many ways is something that just like, it, it's, it's got to happen soon. So that's kind of like on my, on my checklist of things to a do. A page a day. Mm-hmm. A page a day. That's it. You sit down for an hour. You literally, you put a blueprint together. You don't need to hire an expert to do it. And you write a page a day. Anything that is worth it is worth waiting for. You don't need to rush through it. So a page a day, you'll be done in a year. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I'm willing to take the time for it. So that's, that's something that I've been, you know, really talking about. Um, and, uh, but like, you know, like one of, one of my concerns is what we've been talking about is the whole like self doubt thing. It's like, oh, do you, are people interested enough to read a book that I write? Like, I don't know, like, would I read a book that I write? Hmm, I don't know. So like, I think over the course of the past five years, I've been like struggling with that. Maybe, maybe just put a bunch of pictures of you in like bathing suits and that you're guaranteed that at least it's going to be a bestseller. Okay. Whether they read it or not, you know, or if it gets stuck together, who knows, as long as they buy the damn thing, that's all it is. <laughs> the cover is like me in a bathing suit. There you go. There you go. <laughs> the, the, and call it the Jade of Bianca. Oh, but actually, that's close to the title that I've been working with. <laughs> it's not too far off. That's funny, that, but I can definitely see a book. And I mean, the in, in just reading through, you know, all of your accolades as well as you know, stalking. I mean, like following you for years. Um, you've lived a, a very blessed, you know, sort of existence. You know, and you've empowered so many women, which is you know, phenomenal, especially on a day like today, you know, where we see, you know, the first, you know, woman holding a political office, you know, um, as a vice president. So it's like what you've done for women empowerment is, is phenomenal. If I was a woman, I'd fucking love you. I mean, I do love you, but you, you know what I mean? Being a woman is a hard thing. Like, let me tell you this. And this is kind of like, I feel like this is like a really, like, I like how we evolved into this. Um, being a woman is a hard thing because if you succeed as a woman and you're killing it and you're doing awesome, the problem is other women hate you. But when you are aspirational and have a dream, you're part of like this community of women that wants to lift each other up. But then it's funny because when you get to the top, you realize how many women actually hate you because they're jealous of your success. So it is kind of, and this is something that like Hillary Clinton actually kind of like touched on um, after she, she lost um, four years ago to Donald Trump was that her harshest critic. I I, I loved her. I loved Hillary. I I did too. And I, to this day, I like, I'm really pissed about that, but like her harshest critics were women. It wasn't men, it was women. And that is the thing that like bothers me the most is that it's it's a big hurdle that as women we have to get over because I feel like because we came from like, you know, this, these years and years of like male dominated society, um, a lot of women have developed very like, like a masculine kind of like competitive approach to each other. Mm -hmm. And so I will tell you that like when I was like, just making my way in my business. I had so much female support, but then when I like, you know, started doing really well and making money and like, I was on TV a lot and, um, you know, my following started growing, like the people that hated me the most were women. They were, they were women from my own community. And so the way that, the way that I try to like approach these things is, you know, no matter what, like whether these women like hate you or love you or whatever, like you have to keep on empowering them and like making them realize like the only way that you're going to get here to where I am, which is probably where you want to be is by like believing in, you know, believing in your gender, believing, believing in, you know, the powers of, you know, of, of women coming together and 
and boosting each other up and being happy for each other. Like even just that simple thing of like being happy for each other. Um, I, I don't think I saw enough support for Kamala Harris today. Like I saw like a sprinkling of it, like on social media, but like, I wish I had seen more. Like, I just, I still feel like women have so far to come in terms of, you know, of supporting each other. Um, and, you know, I think we will finally be there the day that we have like, you know, more, more women in, you know, in really important, like high standing, you know, political seats. Um, I, I, I agree that that's why I'm not like country without like that, you know, is behind in terms of having like a female leader. I mean, even the smallest, shittiest countries have had female presidents, but not us. Yeah. I mean, I remember doing a, a report on uh, Indira Gandhi, you know, uh, back in the day, you know, and how, you know, she was, you know, in a position of power and what she did, you know, for women, you know, all over, you know, that region. So it's like when Hillary lost, I was like, ah, oh, and there was, uh, you know, I kind of I fell in love with Hillary uh, only because um, and like I know there's like a whole bunch of controversy behind her, you know, but, you know, she's been kind of cleared of just about everything. Um, she was on the a Howard Stern interview. She was talking about how her and Bill first met. You know, and it was like the most beautiful story in the world. And literally, I was in tears because it was like it, it was so genuine. And I was like, this is the type of person, you know, that is ideal for the presidency, you know. And, you know, then she lost and sucked. And then we had four years of fucking misery. Well, that again, like the people spoke and they made a mistake because all the shit that happened with Trump would not have happened with her. I mean, yeah, maybe like maybe people would have gotten sick of like hearing Hillary talk. She doesn't have like the nicest voice and she is, you know, very much business, you know, and, um, you know, she's not she's not Kamala. You know, she doesn't have that like, you know, sass and like, you know, cool vibes that Kamala has. But like but we weren't ready for that. We weren't ready for that level of like, you know. Of, of, you know, female, you know, domination, like, and, and I think, and, and I do think, I think it's a problem that really exists within, um, within women. Like, I, I think if women, more women had come, you know, had given themselves a chance to, you know, get to know Hillary and like hear her politics and hear what she believed in, like, I, I think it would have gone a different way, but women have a long way to come. And that's really like, when we talk about female empowerment, like, I hope that I'm part of that, you know, that, that journey, or I hope that I'm part of that push to motivate women to just support each other more, no matter like what level they're at. I mean, I have, I have followers that like were following me for years that contacted me and they were like, I want to be your friend. I'm growing a business or I'm starting a blog. And, you know, most people would have ignored that. Like some of those people that I connected with, like a, they beca became some of my best friends and, and they were, they were just simply people that were following me and, and B they, I helped them, you know, get inspired with their business. So many of them started blogs, which have become bigger than my blog. Like, and I'm so happy for them and I love supporting them. And it has nothing to do with me or my business or anything. It's just about like, wow, like I was a little bit a part of that story. That's so amazing. That gives me like so much pride. I um, did the same exact thing with artists that, you know, I mean, I've been fucked over so many times in the music industry that, you know, when artists, you know, ask me for advice, I'll, I won't like turn a blind eye. I'll be like, okay, well, this is the deal, you know, and I'll actually, you know, go about telling them, what to do, what not to do. So this way they don't wind up getting fucked. And what, and what you're doing, whether you think it's, you know, it's helping your business directly or not, you're literally building an alliance or an ally, you know, with somebody that's going to be like a fan, you know, for life, especially because when you help somebody, it's literally like the golden rule, do unto others as you would like to have them done unto you. So it's like, if you treat somebody with respect and they ask a simple question of how to like, Hey, I just need a little advice because, you know, I, I want to be able to do what you do because you really inspire me. If you take the time to do that, you've literally developed a fan for life. Yeah, you do. And I mean, like one of my one of my girlfriends, her name is Elizabeth. Um, she messaged me and she was like, I, I like what you've been doing for the last couple of years. Like, just like I, I just really see myself doing that someday. And whether or not she was going to do it, like I, I was so excited that it made, it gave her an idea for how she saw her life. And not only did she start a blog and she, she does like the, um, the Instagram live type of like podcasts, you know, okay. where 
she does them live and then she saves them on her page and she has all these interviews and stuff. It's pretty cool. Um, but she started a clothing collection with like inspirational quotes, like on the shirts and jackets and everything oh, that, cool. that are inspired by the people that she's interviewed. And I was like, that is really awesome. And I can't believe that like, in just a, some, some small way that, um, that I was a part of that because all I know is that she's making money and now she can go buy those Daisy Dukes. You know what I mean? <laughs> that, that is a, what a perfect segue into, you know, into the conclusion of this. Cause uh, I know it is your birthday. I don't want to take up too much of your time, even though I'm having a, a fucking blast with you, um, you know, but, but, I, but, I, but, but I am conscientious of people's time. And I understand that you probably, I know you've been out all day. I pro you probably just want to sit back, throw the bra off and just be like, ah, <laughs> the bra has been off for an hour already really? <laughs> yeah, as soon as i got home i was like woo <laughs> um uh, why don't you tell, why don't you tell our lovely audience where they can find you um you guys can find me at bianca jade on instagram my website is misfit.com with two z's i'm on two youtube z's. under misfit Z misfit video two z's again um, and then I'm on uh, Twitter under Misfit. Basically, if you just look for Bianca Jade or Misfit, you'll find me. Misfit is my company. And of course, Bianca Jade is my name. <laughs> That's her name and the brand. Make sure you look for the blue check wherever you, I don't know where I'm pointing at over here, but where, <laughs> but wherever it is, but make sure to look for the blue check. Uh, Bianca, thank you so much. Before I let you go, um, what's one thing that you want to let all upcoming entrepreneurs know in terms of some inspirational advice for dealing with this pandemic right now? Nice, nice, short and sweet. You don't have to drag it out. Inspirational advice for dealing with the pandemic. Um, I think that this is a really good time to do all the shit that you neglected. And I know that's not like the most exciting tip, but literally that's like real, I, it's so real though. I sat down and I made a list of all the things that I wanted to do last year when I was traveling like crazy and that all the things that made me feel guilty that I wasn't doing. And then I created this list and it was like 20 or so things. And literally over the past year, all I've been doing is checking them off, checking them off because we will never get time like this again, unless Ever. there's a pandemic and hopefully, you know, I hope that doesn't happen. Don't so, even put that out in the universe. This is the time to get, you know, all those things done because it's like a gift, even though it's been a nightmare, it's a gift to like stay at home, do those things, you know, um, and, and plan for the future it really is. So. Well said, well said. And, uh, and if I haven't, you know, made it apparent, I applaud you for all that you have done. Uh, it's, a uh, it's an inspiration and a blessing to even know you are on this level. And I thank you so much for taking your time out, you know, on your birthday in a pandemic to sit with little old me on my, you know, I was, I, I'm so honored that you want to chat with me and I'm so glad we follow each other and that we're friends and, and uh, you always make me laugh and you make me so happy. So this has been a gift. So thank you for also doing it on my birthday. It's a good present. Hey, no, no problem at all. Uh, I hope that I have added to this birthday memory and That's you will true. remember it uh, always. Um, uh, I like to leave... Uh, I like to leave everyone with a, with a quote that I've made up, you know, which I apply to life, which uh, I hope that everyone who watches this as well as yourself, you know, applies this to life as well. Because we are all here for a small cup of coffee. I'm just trying to drink it while it's still hot. I am your host. I am Joe Paul. This is the Verified Podcast. We are brought to you by Radio Pushers and Results in No Hype. We were just chopping up with the lovely, sexy birthday girl, Bianca Jade. Make sure you check her out and make sure you check out these episodes on theverifiedpodcast.com. I love y'all. Peace and love. Take care.